Hey guys, Zach here, and in this episode, we're going to be covering the clutch pedal install, what I'm actually doing with the car, and why you should also manual swap your Pontiac G8. So before we actually get into the goods of how to install the clutch pedal, which to me, looking at things on paper, was the most difficult thing to tackle because... You're cutting through your firewall, and it's just in a very tight spot. Um, we're going to cover a few topics beforehand. So as of now, I don't have a set schedule as to when these videos are going to be coming out. Every couple of days, once I get something done on the car, I will be doing a video kind of like this, a talking head style with pictures, maybe some video that I take, and just cover what I've done, the how-tos, what I used, and whatnot. Um, in the end, whenever I actually finish the build and everything will be done, car's running, driving, I've broken everything in, everything's good, and that way I can actually properly drive it and review it and everything. Um, I'll make a video, just an overview of cost of the whole project, what I did, what parts I used with part numbers, pricing, and everything. Um, I want to be as transparent as possible with this whole thing. I know there's quite a few videos out here on YouTube and a couple other platforms that people have done the swap and they explain what they've done, but there's a few things that I'm like, I wish I had just a little bit more information. And I completely understand. Everybody's swap is going to be different. Everyone's going to use different parts uh, here and there. Everyone's budget's going to be a little bit different. All right, so as far as parts, I got a lot of this stuff from Chris Neves. Um, him and April were actually going to swap her car. Uh, she ended up selling her car, and she got a V2. It's a six-speed car, which is great. Uh, panoramic sunroof for Caros. It's black. I haven't seen it in person, but it looks really good in pictures. Uh, and I'm, I'm super excited to see that someday soon in the future. Um, but the parts I got from them were a rebuilt uh, TR6060 Trans from a 2010 Camaro. Two transmission mounts from a Camaro, which when I talked to the fabricator the other day, they won't work. Uh, we looked at them. They just won't, including the existing G8 GT one. It will not work as well. And fun fact, the GT and the V6 cars, they have the same trans mount. They just flip backwards. Um, but it will not work either. Um, I also have a full engine and transmission Camaro wiring harness. I have a full Camaro shifter, a full Chevy SS shifter. I also have the pedals from the manual car as well and these two items are probably the number one reason i actually picked up this whole setup it is a weighted oem hsv gxp shift knob um i say gxp hsv because they're both the same looking at pictures um, but this one did come from australia so call it what you want i say gxp a couple other people said hsv and i'm like same same i guess not really. And last but not least, I have the unicorn of all the parts that everyone wants for these cars uh, if you're doing the swap, and it is the manual GXP center console trim piece. What the difference between this piece and a GT and V6 car trim piece, and even the automatic GXPs, um, the silver trim ring that goes around um, the actual shifter bezel is not there. Uh, the actual hole for the GXP is cut a little bit bigger. The manual GXP is cut a little bit bigger to allow for the longer throws for the shifter. And most people, what they do when they do the swap, they actually just take their center console existing piece and just cut it out a little bit bigger or use a Dremel and make it bigger. Um, whatever works for them. Uh, it, it might not be the prettiest thing, but it, it works. So moving on from that stuff, uh, we have uh, Tick Performance. I contacted them. I told them, here's how much the car makes. Here's how much I plan to make in like the next two years, maybe. Um, here's the list of parts that I've accumulated through my research. What do you think? They were super knowledgeable, super helpful. And they said, don't do what you were trying to do. Um, the weight of this car is a factor. Um, just don't don't buy something cheap just to get it running buy good quality clutch flywheel <laughs> that's the main two things buy the good quality up front spend a little bit extra money 
That way in six months to a year, depending on your driving style, you don't just roast through your clutch. Um, I completely understand that a clutch is a wear item. It's just like brake pads. It's supposed to wear down over time and you're supposed to change it. There are people out there that think a clutch is supposed to last 300,000 miles. Don't know why, but people think that. Um, and I thought a lot to myself for like a week because I was like, man, do I do I spend an extra $1,000 on this clutch and flywheel set? Or do I just wing it, get the car going, and then in six months turn around and spend the extra $1,000? So now I'm $2,500 into a clutch and flywheel set along with the supporting parts versus just $2,000. Um, so I caved contacted tick i was like okay cool i'm gonna do this i bought the tick and monster performance package so along with the clutch rated for 700 foot pounds of torque um the 24 pound twin disc flywheel i also got a tick slave cylinder the billet master cylinder the braided and heat shielded uh clutch line and a few more uh, little parts also came with stickers and zip ties i feel like that's very important to tell the people because you know if you buy car parts and they don't come with stickers and zip ties, I mean, are they really worth the premium? I mean, I, I, I personally don't think so. Um, but <laughs> these these products did. Um, and then, like I said, I also bought the MGW flat stick shifter. So I know I'm missing a few parts from my list of bulk items I have. Um, and I'll get to something that I missed when I'm actually starting to talk about the clutch pedal install. Uh, when I actually get to the master cylinder, because that's... Uh, that was a doozy. Uh, not really, but it was just a little speed bump. But um, anyways, if you have any questions um, about like what to use, um, how long it took, like what tips and tricks and stuff, um, just really anything with this swap, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, the easiest place to reach out is definitely going to be Instagram. I am on the G8 pages, a couple of Caprice and SS pages as well, but um if you message me on Facebook, I know some people can, some people cannot. I don't know why. Facebook is just weird. All right, now, so for the part that everyone is here waiting for, the clutch pedal install. Um, and the reason I'm really doing this video is just because, like I said, not a lot of people have covered this install this in depth. Um, I have pictures. They're not going to be the best. You're going to have to watch this while you're doing the swap and you'll fully understand everything I'm talking about. And um, let's just get into it. So the next thing on the list is when you're sitting in the driver's seat, there's the kick panel where your knees go. You're going to pop that off. It's just clips. And underneath that from the steering column to the actual firewall is another black plastic piece. You're going to pop that off. It's also just held in by clips. Next up are two aluminum um I don't technically know what they're called. They, they might be guides for if you get in a wreck to keep your knees kind of straight. Um, but if you're looking at it, you'll see them. It's two 8mm bolts. You're going to go ahead and pop those two off, set those to the side. The bracket that's actually bolted to comes off as well. It's actually just six Phillips head screws. There's two on the right, two on the left, and the air duct that comes down, there's two on the bottom there. You just pull that out, and then you have all this room for activities to where you can lay down and you can be looking like me, stressful, um, and just hating the position that you're in. All right, so once you crawl under the dashboard because you've gotten rid of all that stuff, um, if you crawl in and you're on your back with your head pointed towards the firewall and you look straight up and to your right, you'll see these two bolt holes. This is where your clutch will actually bolt into on the dashboard side. Now, if you look at the firewall, there is nothing there. There's no holes, no guide, no nothing. This is where you're actually going to end up having to cut through. And we'll get to that here in a second because that's the most important and crucial part of this whole install. But when you're laying on your back and you look straight up above your head, you'll see where the brake pedal bolts into the dashboard. And behind that on the firewall, you'll see the four bolts that actually hold the brake booster to the brake pedal through the firewall. What you will do from here, or at least what I did, is on the brake pedal itself, you will see a 10 millimeter bolt with a shaft from the brake booster coming out, going to the pedal. Undo that uh, 10 millimeter bolt 
and pop the clip off. Put the bolt and the clip somewhere nice and safe so you won't forget where they're at. And undo the plug for the actual brake position sensor. Um, or brake pedal sensor, I guess. Um, once you do that, you're going to have to go outside of the car. All right, so the next step you can do if you want. I personally would suggest it. I asked people what they did. It was a 50-50 if they did or did not. Uh, and that is removing your braking equipment right there at the firewall. Personally, I would do it because you are drilling so close to it. Plus, you can also see where you're actually drilling into. And, I mean, there's a horn, the brake booster, the master, and everything right there. There's also a wiper motor there, and you'll be able to get your hand in there if you pull all that stuff out of the way. So I do suggest removing all that equipment there. So taking the horn out, it's super simple. It's just a clip. Uh, and then the uh, master and the brake booster itself, take those out as well. Now, I would suggest emptying the fluid in the reservoir there for your brakes, taking the two brake lines off, and then setting the actual reservoir to the side. That way you don't get any fluid anywhere. You're going to have to go back into the car to actually get the brake booster itself off. Um, you've already disconnected it from the brake pedal. From there, you'll just take the four nuts that are actually through the firewall, disconnect all those. I think they're 13s. Pop all four of those off. You'll have to go back outside under the hood, and you'll have to wiggle it a little bit just to get it through. Um, there is a boot on the back side of the brake booster. It's going to catch a little bit because it's got some ridges. You'll just have to keep playing with it and pull it out. Now, if you want to remove it completely, that's up to you. But if you do, you'll either have to move your AC and brake lines way out of the way, which is a little harder than, than what I ended up doing. Or you'll end up having to pop the cowl off where your windshield wipers are. Or you can do like what I did and just pull it to the side enough and call it a day. That way, both of your hands can fit in there and you're good to go. Um, so from here, you'll go back into the car, you'll lay on your back, and you'll undo the two bolts that hold the brake pedal up. Now, even if you are just cutting down your stock brake pedal and throwing it back in, I 110% suggest you do this outside of the car. That way you have better control over what you're doing with the actual brake pedal cutting it. And this also allows you a lot more extra room when you're drilling through the firewall. All right, so I will point out right here that if you do have a Camaro brake pedal that you are installing, um, go ahead and swap over the, the brake pedal position sensor. Um, the G8 one has the correct plug end, where the uh, Camaro does not has two extra prongs on the top. It just will not work. Um, it literally takes two minutes to swap if that. Um, so go ahead and do that right now while it's outside. If you do forget to do that, you can do it while it's in the car. That's why I actually ended up having to do because I figured they were both the same, but they're not. All right, so for this is like the <laughs> the the most important part of the video. I was stuck on this for two hours. Um, looking at the clutch pedal, and you can see here that there's studs, and then the actual uh, master cylinder for the clutch sticks out about an inch past the studs. And I was holding it up, trying to figure out how to bolt it in and all this other stuff, and just really struggling and not understanding why my math ain't mathing. Um, and then the idea was hinted towards me, hey, pop that out, uh, take the brake pedal apart or the clutch pedal apart. So it's just the studs, the silver piece and the pedal and then see if it fits, which of course it did. I went laid back on my back cause you know, that's how you have to do it now. Um, I went ahead and I took the two bolts that go to the dashboard and I bolted those in and I held the pedal up against the firewall. So, from here, I was able to put a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom. Then I took the top bolt out from the dashboard and I moved the pedal down and I ran the bottom bolt in all the way so that the pedal would be completely straight. And I put it up against the firewall and I put a dot there. So I had one vertical line and two horizontal lines and where those lines actually crossed at, that's where I knew where I had to drill. So from here, I drilled a pilot hole and then I drilled out for my actual stud. And then what I did next, I put the pedal into the stud holes and then I bolted it up to the top and made sure everything was flush. I looked inside, outside, back inside, outside a couple times, made sure everything looked good. And then I was like, all right, cool. We're set. We're ready. 
Now, with it still bolted up, you can see on the firewall through the clutch pedal, there's this weird shape. And what I did, I took a scribe and I outlined the shape because this is exactly the shape that you need to cut for your master to actually fit through. I took a three quarter inch uh, hole saw up top and a one and a half inch on the bottom. I was able to get the clutch pedal actually fully installed and I got the OEM uh, master put back in, bolted it up. And as I was like, well, let me go ahead and put everything back together, everything in the interior, everything under the hood, because I'm done with this part. Um, I opened up a box from Tick Performance that I haven't opened since November for the clutch line. And in the same bag with the clutch line was the billet master cylinder for the clutch. Looking at the two, I wish I took a picture of the two together. Um, you can't really tell. But looking at the OEM one, it sticks out about an inch and a half. Looking at the Tick Performance one, it sticks out about three inches, which this makes no issue. This actually makes the Tick Performance one a lot better because it's more serviceable. Even with the brake booster in, I can fit my hand through there. I would just have to pop the horn off if I really need to access it, but this makes it so much easier to work on. The thing that got me, though, is looking at the Tick Performance one, it's a flat piece, pretty much. It, it is a, a cylinder still. It does have the, uh, the barb that comes off the top. But if you measure it, it's only just shy of an inch and a half. Whereas if you look at the OEM one, it is about two inches because you have to accommodate for that piece of plastic for the uh, clutch line to go into. So that's why you have to drill the inch and a half on the bottom and the three quarter on top for it to fit. Had I looked at this, I could have just drilled my uh, inch and a half hole and called it a day. But I didn't. Um, also looking at this picture, you can see that the rod that actually holds to the clutch pedal, it's all uh, steel. It actually clips in with metal versus the uh, OEM one that's all plastic and I even was complaining to Ryan I was like this thing's gonna break this piece of crap like man I wish I would have bought <laughs> the tick performance one and then 20 minutes later hey Zach you bought the tick performance one so let's get it installed so uh, literally to pull the pedal back out fully bolted in uh, to pull it out swap over the masters and bolt it back in was two minutes once it's in it's in if you got to service it, super simple to service and just do that. Um, and then from there, it's pretty much reverse order of taking everything apart uh, because technically you shouldn't need to really do anything else under the uh, in the interior or under the hood there. Um, and if you do, I mean, you do. If you don't, you don't. I 110% am glad that this is the first thing I did because I would have hated to have everything 99% done and then this be the one thing that I just cuss and fuss and get upset and then want to sell the car for the 50th time on Marketplace. Um, but this was the one thing that looking at everything I had listed out that needs to happen during the swap, this was the one thing that freaked me out the most. And Ryan, he was like, do that first. If you can do that, you can pretty much figure out the rest of the swap. And there, like I said, there's no guide to this part. And this is the... I'm not saying I have all the answers and, and maybe this method has been done before. I don't know. Um, but here's the few pictures I have. Here's some information. So if you're doing it, I hope it helps. If it does, great. If not, I hope something in the future can help. Um, so that that's the clutch pedal install. Um, I'm super happy. Everything's good to go on that aspect. Uh, I do plan on in the future getting the ZL1 pedal covers to match the sport pedal in the G8. Um, that's just something I, I want to do. That's a aesthetic thing to me that I just want it to match. So the next thing on the chopping block is definitely getting the mount put in. Uh, that should be tomorrow. And then making the wiring harness will be next. But one thing I do want to say, um, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a guy who has a love of cars. I just enjoy driving cars. I enjoy 
going to races. I enjoy being a part of the car scene and everything. And this car, it, it just means so much to me. Um, and again, whenever I do a full overview for the car, um, I can explain a backstory on that and everything. And um, But going away from that, this is hands down the biggest project I've ever taken on with a car. And it's just proving that if I can do it, you can do it too. Now, I mean, this isn't like a, a K swap Ferrari, like stance works is doing or anything. I trust me. We're nowhere near that, but, um, seriously, th this is a project that I've been wanting to do since before I even bought my Pontiac G8. I was like, I want a manual G8. And if I can't buy a manual one, cause they're so daggone expensive, I will swap one and I'll figure it out. And, um, I'm figuring it out. Um, but yeah, so that's all I got for now. Um, keep up with the updates. Uh, maybe like once a week, maybe once every two weeks, there'll be an update video. Um, and like I said, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, reach out to me on Instagram, but until then save the man.